it, it's really hard to tell what the most life-threatening situation was. I've been doing this for 25 years, but I can call some specific instances, like uh, one was the Oakland Hills fire, where uh, we were the first strike team over there. We were on some streets where we had fire everywhere. Matter of fact, coming over the top of the engine, it ended up burning the lights off. A uh, fire had trapped us from behind, so we couldn't go backwards. And in front of us, there were high-tension power lines that were down across the road, so we ended up having to uh, cut through those high-tension power lines, just hoping that they weren't live each time we cut one with, you know, 17,000 volts in it. So, uh, but we made it through, and uh, I think there's probably been a great number of experiences after that, but the biggest thing about the job is just being able to go into a high-risk situation, but in emergency services, you know, the people don't really know your name or much about you. You're in and you're out. You know them for 20 minutes to 40 minutes, and then you're done, and you go do something else. So you really never know what the follow-up is. However, I do remember going to, uh, it was Thanksgiving, and I went to an unconscious person at the Thanksgiving dinner table, and I pulled up, and there was a woman who was in cardiac arrest. So, you know, at the Thanksgiving dinner, we pulled her away, and we started CPR, and started advanced life support, did some IVs, and defibrillated her, I remember, around probably a dozen times. And she kept losing her pulse and kept coming back. And so we worked on her pretty hard and did a lot of care for her uh took her to the hospital and usually when someone's in cardiac arrest you take them to the hospital they don't make it most of the time we know this so it was thanksgiving and took her in and transferred care and then that was it we were done and never really thought about her again until it was christmas eve and the doorbell at the firehouse rang and opened it up and this woman with her daughter looked kind of familiar but I didn't know why, and that was the same woman. She had just been released on Christmas Eve from the hospital, and the first place she wanted to come was to the firehouse. When we were getting ready to go over, we didn't really tell anyone we were going, but people found out and started giving us little bits of money to try to help the Haitians. So we, uh, I had this $20 bill in my pocket. We were in a camp, uh, a refugee camp, and we wanted to get them, this family, this woman who had an injured leg and had kids and grandkids, a little bit of money to help them through until the large aid organizations could get in and start working with them. But we knew that with all the people around that we couldn't show them that we had any money because we would have been killed. And so I didn't know how to get the money to her until she wanted her, her bandage checked on her leg. And so I changed out her bandage when I was rolling the new bandage on. I slipped the $20 into that new bandage, clipped it closed, and then I told her to check her bandage that night and the next day. I spent most of my career watching people do horrific things to each other and I worked in some places where it was routine and everything that I saw were people doing horrific things to each other. A lot of shootings, stabbings, people setting their partners on fire with that kerosene because they were upset with them, that kind of stuff. And that was really normal to me. And what I found really what didn't affect me is people were actually really good to each other. I remember specifically uh, one call was a nothing call. It was a, an older woman who had fractured her hip getting out of her car. She was laying in the garage. Uh, her husband was there with her, and uh, he was the nicest guy to her, and he just kept telling her how much he loved her. And they'd been together for about, I don't know, probably 50 or 60 years. And that kind of thing where people go out of their way to be kind to each other is what impacts me the most. And I always remember them. That was probably 20 years ago I, I, I went on that call, which really by you know our standards was a nothing call. But somehow that really impacted me. And so people wouldn't do that kind of stuff. I really notice it, and it, that's what really has an effect on me.